there's no way <laughs> to say differently. It is a really strange deck, but I like it a lot because it is just that much different. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Zekos and welcome to another entry into the solo card game series I have on my channel here. Um, and before we get into the game, as usual, let me present today's deck. So today I'm presenting the Grid deck, Series 3. So there were several, several series that came out on Kickstarter. I think they just had another series just a short time ago. Um, but I didn't back that because I thought this one was pretty cool and I don't need more iterations of that deck, to be honest. Um, but the grid deck is pretty cool because it does have um, a very geometric pattern and it is just way different than normal cards. So right here, you already see like, okay, this is like um, pretty interesting here. So you have like that large G that you can see here that extends all the way to the back here. Yeah, and this is called GS3, which is Grid Series 3, right? So these are like typographic playing cards, which is really interesting. So let me show those to you. Let me just get them out here. Um, and you can already see a lot of weird stuff going on here, probably. <laughs> so here you have these spades and it is really interesting. There's like so much to uncover here. Um, I will probably have to change the, I have to change the focus most likely. So you can see them a little bit closer. So let me pull them a little bit closer and adjust the focus. There we go. That should be okay. Oh, you saw my mouse, but I think that's not the first time. So I think like this should be okay. Because right here, this is three of spades, for example. So you see the three of spades there, 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 and there in different colors and also in different sizes and orientations. Um, then you see like the TH for three and SP for spades up here. Um, you have like the large three here that extends all the way to the, to the corner here. Then you have three of spades in letters again here. And also you have like um, lists of all ranks and of all suits. And you have that one highlighted here, the three and spades. And this is really interesting. There's so much going on in this card. I mean, it's still possible to play with it because you see like in all corners, you see the, see the, uh, the rank and the suit, right? But still it's really strange. Um, you see here, you have the four and you see it gets even stranger, right? Because it's not all, always the same. Now the four is like this here, right? It's like totally in a different, oh, let me pull that a little bit down, in a different orientation here. Um, but it's still the similar vibe, right? So you have four spades here, you have the different things here, and also uh, up here, FO and SP. So that is really funny. And the red cards are pretty similar. That is the queen here. Um, and here you have the red cards. So they are pretty much um, identical or similar at least. Um, but you see that they are a little bit different because this time the number is the white, the white part and not the red part, right? So that is totally interesting. I really like these, this deck. It is strange. There's no way <laughs> to say it differently. It is a really strange deck, but I like it a lot because it is just that much different. And then you have the Joker here. It's just Joker. <laughs> That's pretty much all. Um, and I think, yeah, there are the other jokers here, right there in yellow then. Um, I don't actually know why there are three jokers in here. They you don't have that very often, but um, yeah, that pretty much is it. Uh, let me just readjust the focus so we can actually play our game. And uh, yeah, that is the Grid Series 3 deck. And as the name implies, there are different series and they all look a little bit different. They all have that idea of the typographic geometric kind of layout, but um, yeah, they are a little bit different. And I like this one a lot. Um, it is not that practical for playing, right? It just looks cool, like with all this stuff here, but this, there's so much going on here. So you really need to just look in the top left here, right? Or when you have, have it like this in the top left there, um, to see what kind of card is because here it's, it's really hard to see, right? It's really hard to see and you're not going to read out that stuff here. This is just for because it's funny. Um, so that is a pretty funny deck. We will play with that today. So let's hope we can play with that well. So we don't need the jokers. Let me remove those because what game are we playing today? Today we are playing another classic that you might know. 
Um, and today we will be playing Pyramid. Uh, Pyramid Solitaire, you probably know that. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is also a Windows or Microsoft version of that. Um, so let me just first uh, quickly set up the game and then I will show you how to play it. And that is the setup of the game. Surprise, it's a pyramid. <laughs> Just uh, the, the way the name is called. So what you do is you lay out um, all the cards in a pyramid shape. So you have in the first row, you have one card, then two cards, then three, and then four. And you go on like that until you have like seven rows. And the last row at the bottom here is made up of seven cards. The rest of the stack, or the rest of the, uh, the, the, rest of the cards is then put here to the left. Um, that's the draw deck that you can use. And what we are doing now is we are trying to pair cards um, that add up to a value of 13. So um, we, it starts with the ace. The ace is um, has a face value of one. And then we have two, three, four, five, right? The regular cards up until 10. They're just um, at the, the face value is just the card value. And then uh, we have the, the jack is 11, queen, 12, king, 13 points so the king already is 13 on its own so we can just take the thir the king and just remove it like this and then we just put them right um like on this card pile here to the right or can i i can actually just put them up here um, um these are the cards we don't need anymore right so we need to add them up to 13 so for example let me see if we have anything actually that's a pretty bad showcase because i think we don't have anything that adds up to 13 yet i don't think so and what we do then is then we just turn over a card here and then we see we can also try to pair cards with the card here and if we can't do that if we don't want to do that we will just put it here on the waste pile here and then we turn over the next card seven so seven plus six is 13 so we could pair these two um, and that's what we will do so we will take the six and also the seven here and because six and seven they add up to 13 we can discard them like remove them from the game. And that's how we will continue. And you see, um, the more cards we we get gone here, the further down the pyramid we get. We win the game when we remove all the cards, which is very tough because that one here, you can only get when you removed all other cards, right? So that is gonna be pretty tough. So let's see, eight um, plus five here, that's 13. So let's also remove these. And then the, you see now we have the seven here, but there's no six we can pair it with. Also, we can not only pair it with the cards we draw from here, we can also pair it with the top card here, right? So um, the jack, that is 11 points. So we need a two to be able to pair that. So jack and two, that works. Um, let's see, jack, we don't have another two. So we will put that here. And now you see the ace is now covered. So to get to the ace, we first need to get rid of the jack here. Okay, eight plus five, there is no five. Eight, no five, we can't pair it with anything. Um, let's see, here we have a five. So now we have up, we have another option. Um, the five, we cannot pair with anything here because there's no eight here, right? But we could pair the five and the eight, these two, to pair these two and get them gone. Um, let me see, we can't see all the cards here. So we have one five in there, one eight two fives yeah it could be an idea to actually get these two gone so they don't annoy us but i mean they don't do anything right so i will not do that for now the queen we can only pair with an ace and that is perfect because we have one right there so because a queen is 12 points remember um and an ace is one so 12 plus one is 13 the king is 13 on its own so we can just remove it like this Okay, and the five here, we can't pair with anything at the moment. Six plus seven is 13. Um, seven, we don't have another six yet. Nine, for a nine we would need a four. There is a four up there, but we can't get to it yet. We would need a four here. Seven, there is no six. We only have a nine and a 10 here. So all we need is a three or a four yeah the king we can just remove like that uh two no the two won't help us either the two won't help us either oh that doesn't look great but let's see if we can do anything here 
nine, no nine, ace, jack, ten, queen, nine. So we are not able to do anything. So and now the deck is empty, right? So we just take our um, our waste pile here and we just turn it over, and then we can con. Continue. The problem is that we need a three and a four, and oh, you see, this is a we are pretty unlucky because you see we have all threes are up here, so we are not able to remove that ten here at all, not yet. Um, we need a four to get rid of the nine, so there's one four here, two fours, three fours are here. Okay, did we have another four here? No, we didn't. So there must be still be if I. Oh no, there's another four. One, two, three fours, four fours. That's it. Because we need a four to get rid of the nine, and also we need a three to get rid of the ten. And all threes and fours are in here. So we're really unlucky. That was a really bad starting configuration, um, which is pretty bad because I really wanted to showcase the game a little bit better, to be honest, right? But let's just imagine. Just imagine, right? that um, we were able to remove these two somehow. All right, let's just imagine, because I want to show you how the game continues then, right? Let's just imagine that. I mean, I lost the game now. I will also mark that on Board Game Geek like this, but um, let's just remove it like this. So the 1083, that was fine. Um, so, and now we can continue. Actually, let's just reset the deck here um, and pull up the cards a little bit, all right. So, and then the queen and the ace, we could remove these two, right? Because 12 plus one. For the 10, we would need a three. Uh, here we need a nine, and there we need an eight. Here we have an eight, right? And we would just continue this way as far as we can. 10 and three, that's 13. That is wonderful. Um, and then we have another three here, four and six, okay. The five, we could remove with the eight here, but that's not gonna help us too much. Seven and six, that works, because I wanted to show you something, right? Because I have the seven here, and now I can use the six here for 13, and then there's the eight. So we can actually use the top card from our waste file to remove that eight. Also, we can remove that king here. Um, with the eight on the waste pile, we can remove that five. And you see, we were really unlucky with the starting configuration, right? But otherwise, um, it is actually uh, well possible to continue because you see here, four, nine, wonderful. Um, the jack is 11, so that's not gonna help us. We need a 10 here or an ace. Let's see if we can find anything. Um, here's an ace for the queen. So that's a nine or a 10 here. We have a nine here, that is wonderful. Uh, do we have a 10 here? Mm, yep, yeah, we have a 10 here. And then the 10 and the three, we can remove these two. And here we need now a seven or a nine. Let's see if we can, we have a nine here. And now, right, the deck is, oh, um, is, is, is done. So we just turn it over and hope for a, what do we need, a seven? We have a seven here. And then for the two, we need a jack, which is lying right here. So you see, we just had that issue with the two cards that were blocking each other, right? But if we, uh, if that hadn't been the case, we actually would have won because the permit is completely gone. Um, and yeah, that was pretty much it. So there's just one more thing. You can also make the game a little more challenging by trying to remove all the cards, right? So you also need to pair these with each other. Um, that is now pretty hard because um, we shouldn't. Ha we should have tried to do it uh, before. But for example, here the jack and the two. Um, we could do this. We can't pair these with each other, um, right? And we are not able to pair the rest with each other, right? Um, so that would be the even harder variant. So that you have everything in the discard pile over here. Um, so one rule that is not official, I think I haven't seen it a whole lot um, when looking at games of Pyramid, but um, let's say you are done with the game and you, um, so you get stuck because you still have stuff here in your Pyramid and you can't pair it, right? Like this, for example, and you're not able to pair that anymore with any of the cards that are, let's say you have 
uh, these are all in your discard pile and you have still have these left and you're not able to pair those anymore, right? Then your game is over. So either you could say you lost, but you could also just um, take these four cards and add them as points. So you have four points in this game and you want to have zero points, right? Because you win. But this way you could not only say, oh, I lost in the next game. Oh, I lost again. And the next game, oh, I lost again. But you could actually, uh, you could say, okay, this time oh, I did lose, but I got two points only. Right? I only got two points this time and not four. Um, so you could try to at least get better that way because um, while Pyramid is a pretty cool game, it is quick to set up, it is very easy to play, it is very prone to luck. Um, because you just saw the starting configuration I had. That was probably the worst configuration I've had in a long time. Um, and then you're just not able to win anymore, right? If you if there's just one rank that um, you have in the that you have at, at the top of the pyramid at some place. Like all four cards uh, somewhere in the pyramid, then you can, or you, you still can win, but it's really tough. And I was really unlucky to have exactly the two cards that pair with each other, so the fours and the nines. I had them all in the pyramid, so I was not able to pair those at all, and that was like the worst luck I could have probably. Um, but then you can say, okay, this time I lost and I got I don't know like twelve points because there's still twelve cards left. That's bad, but the next game I might do better because you will not win this game very often, right? You will not win it very often because it's very prone to luck. You need to have a good configuration that you can't really influence. And if you could influence it, then you would already know the solution. So um, that is a little bit tough. I'm pretty sure that you could look for like puzzles that are online. Um, they're probably like specific starting configurations. You can sort yourself, maybe you can get through those, but that's not really what the game is about. So I would suggest playing it with this points variant. That's usually what you use for other games, but I use it for Pyramid as well. So it's a little bit, it's just not as frustrating, right? So you, your goal is not only to win, that's like the end goal, but just trying to get better at least. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. So that was my showcase of the, of the grid playing card deck and also my playthrough of Pyramid Solitaire. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm really glad that the feedback is this positive um, regarding my solo card game series. I, wanted to, I, I had wanted to do it for a long time and I finally started a little while ago and I'm glad that you all enjoy it this much because I think it's a really cool series. Just imagine this playlist having like 20 or 30 videos at some point or even more. I think that's a really cool collection of solo card games. There is also the idea of doing a similar series for non-solo card games because it's just great to have a deck of cards with you and play by yourself or play with other people. Um, but I'm not quite sure yet whether I will do that. I will have to see because I can't do a playthrough there. I can only um, do an instructional video, right? But uh, I'll see about that. If you have any thoughts about that, why don't you put them in the comments? All right. And if you're still watching, thank you very much for doing so. I really highly appreciate that as usual. Um, if you like this video, why don't you let me, let me know by just dropping a comment right under this video so we can have a little discussion. I always love to be in contact with you and talk with you about games. And if that's the first of my videos you're watching, why don't you head over to my channel? There are lots more videos, also a few in this playlist. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the very next video. All right, take care everyone and cheers.